All right, in this episode, we're going to try to parse arrays in JSON. This should be a lot of fun. Give us some cool, cool combinators. And one thing that we're going to implement here before we get into the array itself is a monad instance for our parsers. And what's the motivation? Why do we need a monad instance? Well, I like to use the string parser that we built to kind of illustrate why it's useful to have a monad. Well. Basically, if you look at this and many other things we implemented, we had to kind of build up a new parser from scratch. And we had to do all of the work inside of that parser. We had to do all the gut work. Um, so we had to um, get the text, you know, get text in a function. We'd always be parsing that text. We had to be remembering to unbox the remaining characters and pass them forward here. And we had to remember to unbox the characters again. And then we had to, you know, uh, return these values. And actually, now that I'm looking at string, I'm pretty sure we could have implemented this using applicative instances. But if we had gone and used a monad instance, um, basically we would have just been able to talk in terms of parsers. We wouldn't have had to talk in terms of the internal parsers, just the external parsers we wanted to compose in order to make this. So I'm not going to worry about that right now, but basically to do an array, arrays are one of the first things that we're going to deal with that's self-referential, meaning an array, if you look at its definition, it has elements and the elements are a value and a value can be an array. So they're recursive. So that's going to be interesting. Um, arrays can be empty or arrays can have elements. So that's interesting as well. Um, there's basically a lot of little edge cases to arrays. That's pretty much all there is to it. So, we're going to need a couple new things, but basically to start out with, a JS array is a parser of JSON, of course, and a JS array is going to be a list of JSON. So that's what it does, just wraps a list of JSON. Nothing too wild there. So what does a JS array look like? Well, a JS array, and we're going to try to copy what's here, is either empty brackets with white space or it's a list of elements, an array of elements. So we can say between, which we already have, car open. Oh yeah, we have to put white space here, which we don't have yet. And car close. Okay, so that's one way to parse an array. And notice, that looks pretty close to this definition, which is kind of cool. Or, it's elements between these things. Yep, elements between brackets. Okay, so what are elements? Well, elements are you can kind of merge these together using parser combinators with a parser combinator that's typically called many sep by, where elements equals many sep by. This is going to be an element, and then we're going to have to give a delimiter, and the delimiter is the comma character. So many sep by just parses out zero or more of this first parser separated by the second parser. So what is an element? An element is white space value white space. So let's just go ahead and inline that white space JS value white space. Okay, now we have a couple of things to implement and I really want to implement this many set by using a monad. I think it'll just be the most clean way to implement. So let's implement white space first because white space is something simple and very useful that frankly we're going to need probably in a couple more places. But anyways, white space is the parser of a string. And really in all cases we throw this value away so we could do this but let's make it so that we don't lose information. So what is white space? Well, white space is one of which is the parser we've already built in an earlier video. It's one of 
either care, new line, care, carriage return, care space, or care tab. Oops, care tab. <clears throat> so is that how JSON defines white space? Uh, I don't actually know the character codes, but I assume I got it right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We'll assume that that's right. And this is actually one or zero or more. We can have white space or not. So this is sum. If you remember sum, we got it from our alternate case. Um, let me just, because I can never remember, I can never remember which one's sum and which one's um, many. Ah, actually we want many, because there's zero or more. Right, because our many set by will do zero or more as well. Okay, and that's actually all for that. Now we need to do many set by, and we also need to put JS array inside of our JS value parser. So let's copy where they put it. I believe it would be the first object now because we don't have actual objects yet, the first parser. So JS array comes before string. And we can go ahead and export JS array here. And that's pretty good. Um, I guess the one thing that we're missing here is we're missing basically uh, the actual constructor. So we should be able to say JS array dollar sign or map rather. And yeah, so now we're missing many set by. So let's go ahead and let's just for now throw it right here at the type hole to make sure everything we're doing so far is working. <clears throat> Since we're not actually invoking array anywhere, we shouldn't have any errors. Okay, type signature for many, lacks a binding, yep. I forgot, in Haskell you can't just put a hole. Um, I think in Idris, that would be pretty happy with that. Couldn't match type, okay. So we have a couple of issues here. Between white space, ah. So here the problem is that, um, like I said, we could have just thrown white space away, but we didn't, so this is a string. So what we want to do is we want to return an empty array if we get nothing from in there. Okay, wonderful. And many set by, it doesn't actually have any idea what the signature is. Um, <laughs> interesting. Let me throw an undefined and try again, just to make sure things still work. Okay, wonderful. So now, what does many set by actually look like? Well, let's put it by one up because it's a similar kind of thing. But basically, what we want is, and looking back at it, we want a parser of A, and then we want a parser of B, which is gonna be our delimiter. And this is gonna return back a parser of a list of A. So we're throwing away the delimiter. So we have a parser P and we have a parser of a delimiter. Okay, now what do we want to do? Well, we want to do this in a monad now. So I'm gonna pretend we already have our monad instance. So you can see kind of why you might want to do this. So basically what we got is we have to parse a value, and to do that, we can literally just apply p like this. So no longer do we have to do parser dollar sign text, and then say parse p text, all that rigmarole, um, and remember to carry on value here, uh, whatever. We don't have to do that anymore. When we have a monad instance, we can just talk in terms of combining parsers which is pretty, pretty cool. It's very cool. Um, so then we're gonna try to parse the delimiter. So D is gonna be delim. Now, many set by 
actually works by it, it's got zero or it'll parse zero or more occurrences and the delimiter kind of indicates that you should keep going you should keep parsing so one thing that we need to do here that's a little sneaky perhaps is um, one thing we get another thing we get along with applicative is optional so we actually have a parser we have a parser that already exists for parsing optional values that we got for free and this just uses maybe inside of the result. So this is not to be confused with the parse result. It's gonna wrap the result again with a maybe. So what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna say this is optional. And we're gonna say this is optional as well. And then we're just going to say case B and D of, and we're gonna think about what it means to be successful. So if we get a value, if we get two values, what do we want to do here? Well, we want to apply many set by again on P or mm, yeah, using our P using our delim. Notice that we don't, this is just so much nicer than we were doing before where we always had to be extracting these values and passing them forward. We don't have to do that anymore. That's handled for us. But anyways, this says, this gets us more values and then what we can do is we can actually return our value with more values const on. Pretty neat. So basically, if we get, the, the point is here, if you can think of it in terms of arrays, if we get a comma back, then we want to keep parsing. We want to recurse. If we don't get a comma back, so this next case would be the nothing case, well, that's a little bit easier. We just want to return back our value. And then it doesn't, we don't really, I don't think we care about the case. If we get nothing here, but we get something here, that's actually a bug. That means we parse like two commas in a row, I think. So if that happens, what we want to do is we want to fail. And we can actually fail by using empty because that's what empty is. It's a failing parser. All right, and if we get nothing, nothing, which is the last case, what we wanna do is we wanna return back an empty list. And that's perfectly acceptable because many set by takes zero or more. Um, it parses zero or more. So that's all good, that's all fine and dandy, but now we need our monad instance. So let's go ahead and let's implement our monad. So to implement a monad, you need to implement bind. All right, and I'm actually gonna implement something that's gonna help implement our monad more cleanly. In general, I don't know if this is always true, but mu much of the time you can implement a monad in terms of map. I think it is always true. You can implement a monad in terms of map and something that looks like this. I'm gonna call it join, because that's what I see it tend to be called. So basically join is a way to say, if you've got something layered, you can squish one layer out. Um, one of the most obvious cases is this, this equals concat. If you're talking about lists. So you can see kind of how this parallels. If you went and you replaced um, the wrappers with F, or maybe M, you'd get something like this. And likewise here, you get something like this. So you can see that these are kind of the same concept. Not the same implementation, of course, but the same concept. So here we have a P. And what do we want to do? Well, in this case, we are going to have to one last time implement something that pulls all this apart. So case P text, we we'll parse. Uh, if we get nothing, we want to turn back nothing. We get just a value and rest. Well, we want to. <clears throat> so remember, this value here is actually another parser. We want to parse using p prime on the rest. So it's pretty much a way to apply nested parsers. I'm going to make this undefined and just make sure we haven't gone off the deep end. 
with anything we've done so far. Between elements care. Couldn't match JSON array. Expected type parser of JSON. Actual type parser of array. Ooh, that was a little while ago, unfortunately. So elements is going to be, oh, did I get my mini set by signature wrong? No, that looks right. Um, many set by, hmm. Okay. Um, let's just narrow the types a little bit. So this should be a parser of JSON. Maybe that'll help me figure out what's actually wrong. Couldn't match type JSON array with JSON. The second argument of, huh. Oh man. All right, what am I doing wrong here? White space, white space. Maybe I have an issue in white space. Now it's a parser of string, that should be totally fine. Between elements, car and car. Oh, you know what? It might be because of the way that this is being bound. Yeah, the problem was um, my map is binding basically where I don't want it to. Um, I didn't realize, but this binds more loosely than bind, which means my map was just being applied to this first value here. Okay, my bad, sorry about that. Let's continue on. So to our monad instance. So our monad instance is actually going to be really easy using this join. So we're going to join, and we're going to apply join to fmap, f over p, which of course, if we have this, we can just do that. That's the inline fmap. OK, so one other thing it's complaining about is that we have a d prime, which is our delimiter. We don't actually use the delimiter. That's true. We don't care to use the delimiter. We're just parsing it for posterity's sake at this point, <laughs> pretty much. Okay, excellent. So now that that's done, we got to go and write some tests. There's just too much here not to test it. And specifically for monads, we do have monad laws. And the monad laws, I think, are actually easier to follow than the applicative laws, in my opinion. So let's just go ahead and copy these. We're going to implement all of them, hopefully fairly easily. So, hmm. At first, I didn't really like how that copied, but I actually kind of like it now. All right. So, describe. So this should actually be return and. Fine. Now we get return for free because we inherited, or because we implemented applicative, which you have to implement anyways to get a monad. So it's actually pure. Return and pure are the same thing. So basically, what do we have here? We have returning an A and then binding. So we have some value, some string, for example, and then binding to an F should be the same thing. Okay. Property. So given some string, and we'll call it A so that it matches, and then given some F. So this is going to be a little trickier, but basically what F is, is it's a fun F, fun from string. Fun goes from string to the output of to, 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 this needs to be a parser of string. Okay, this should be so if we say, oh, okay, in this case, we actually probably do have to apply our parser to something. So we'll take in another string s. So we'll say parse string equals parse string. And then on the left side, we have return A to F. And then on the right side, we have F of A. Let's see how that came out. It's looking good so far, but does it pass? 
Excellent. So far, so good. So that was left identity. It's too much easier these feel than the applicative ones so far. So right identity is not much more difficult, if more difficult at all. So here we're given an M, which is one of our parsers. M is a parser of string, and F and G we are also given. And F looks like our last F. Okay, let me just uh, do this. F looks like our last F. G also looks like our last F. And then what is the actual law now? The actual law is M bound into return equals M bound into F bound into G. Oh, actually, nope. I'm reading too far ahead. This is just M. This is way simpler than I thought. So just M. M bound into return is the same as M. So we actually don't care about any of this at all. So let's make sure that passes. Excellent. So that's right identity. Now we need associativity. And this one's a little more complicated, but it's nothing too crazy. And it, it's kind of nice because it resembles associativity for normal binary operations. So it's kind of, you know, it's one of those ones that's easier to understand. Um, so F is going to be a fun, F is gonna be a fun from string to parser of string. Same with G. And then we're gonna need some S to actually make all this concrete. So S is a string. And actually, you know what? We probably don't need to annotate that because we always parse strings anyways. So M bound into F bound into G is the same thing as M bound into a new function where f of x is bound into g. Okay, let's see how we did. Um, messed up in the signature. Conflicting definitions for f. I must have accidentally named these both f. One should be g. And there we go. Uh, our monad is looking like it obeys the laws that we want to obey. Now we're not gonna test many set by directly. Instead, we're just going to test JS array and JS value since that is the end game in this all. So JS array, there are a couple of inter really interesting cases with this one. Um, the white space case is kind of interesting too. So it should parse just an empty array all by itself. JS array, empty array. Um, let's do that. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I don't know how to focus on particular tests inside of um, HSpec, but I know Sir Sweet's taking a little longer, so I'm just gonna move these to the top for now. We'll move them down later if I remember. <clears throat> okay, so far so good. We got an empty array. Parses. So the actual spec spells out arrays with white space specifically. So there must be something special about that parse case or else they wouldn't do that. Um, let's say white space. And then we'll say, you know, space, space, tab, new line, return, new line, new line, space, whatever. Um, and that should also just parse as an empty array. Excellent, looks good. So um, let's try parses with some number, or actually let's say integer, because that's specifically what we can handle right now. So property, um, dollar sign, n, and let's be really clear this is an integer. So parse JS array, 
where we have something like this, concat. Um, <laughs> concat and then show n. So we have just an integer sitting in an array with white space around it. This should equal JS array with a, and I guess we don't need should be because we're using properties. This should be JS number n. All right, let's give that a try. Oh, concat is a thing, but I need to apply parentheses to actually disambiguate what I mean, or correctly apply it rather, not even disambiguate. <laughs> that was giving myself too much credit. Okay, so far so good on that one. Um, let's try, I'm not really sure what else is truly an interesting case. Let's try, um, I know it's fun, an array of an array. So this should just be JS array, JS array. Oh, I still have a property. This shouldn't be a property, but uh, it did pass, which is good. And let's see, are there any other interesting cases? I guess I could try some failing cases. Commas are necessary. One, two, like this should be nothing. Um, we should probably also make sure that we can, in fact, parse, parse multiple. Parse multiple elements should be just JS array, JS number one, JS number two. And then if there are no commas, we should fail to parse. Okay, uh, that's looking pretty good. Let's see, is there anything else interesting to parse here? I guess, hmm, I can't really think of anything, honestly. I mean, I'm sure there's more cases. There's probably a bug here somewhere that I'm not thinking about, but uh, everything seems pretty happy. So I guess I might as well as throw a case into JS value to make sure that works. Um, parses arrays. So why don't we just say array and we'll put a string inside of it, hi. So this should be a JS array of JS string, hi. Just to give an example there as well. <clears throat> okay, and everything seems to be working. So I did actually remember, let's take JS array and put it back to the bottom of our test suite and also indent it. All right, thank you everyone for watching. We got a raise.